Okay, understanding independent and dependent events. So this uh, video is kind of designed for, um, or focused uh, for the students that are kind of maybe taking a high school um, uh, mathematics and, and studying some probability, or maybe like those college students who are really kind of getting into some probability. Uh, probability can be pretty confusing, no doubt about it. Once you understand all the moving parts, then it gets to become much more uh, clear. And this is for most students. So some of you out there might have no problem with this. Now, I think with probability is that when we're looking at it, there's so many kind of different scenarios that can play out. There's uh, conditional probability, there's independent and dependent events, mutually exclusive, et cetera. And uh, you gotta be able to ascertain what, what um, situation you're dealing with in order to use the um, the proper uh, formulas or the proper uh, rules. So th this is why I want to go ahead and, and encourage you just to look at big picture concepts first when you're studying uh, probability. Make sure you understand those big picture ones before you really drill down into the smaller ones. It seems like common sense, but you want to keep those in mind because it's easy to um, uh, confuse things. Okay, so let's get into independent and dependent events. Now the big thing here is that both independent and dependent events are going to be those probability questions that we have that have the word and in them, okay? So I'm going to kind of um, write the rule down. We'll start with independent events first, okay? I'm going to write the rule down, then we'll explain it. So a probability of A and B occurring is going to be the probability of A times the probability of B. B, okay, so this is uh, independent events. So let's get into this a little bit more in detail. So let's say I over here I have my little, uh, this is a coin, <laughs> this is what this is supposed to be. I'm gonna call it a quarter, a dime, whatever, it doesn't make a difference, but uh, this is a coin, okay. So let's say I want to know the probability of us, of you getting a tail on a flip and then getting a tail again, okay. So what's the probability of getting a tail and then and a tail, okay or a head and a head, it doesn't make a difference, okay? But this is this word and is in there. Now this is the real critical thing that I'm going to really stress to you, okay? The difference between independent and dependent events. And it's the following, okay? The probability of A occurring, okay, is not gonna have any influence of pro the probability of B occurring. In other words, these events that we're looking at have no bearing on one another. So let's go back to our, our coin flip here. Let's say I flip this coin and I get uh, tails, okay? So what was the probability of me getting tails on this? Well, it's gonna be a one out of two chance, right? Or 50%. Now, if I got tails uh, um, on my previous flip and I'm got the coin again and I'm gonna flip it again, it, is, is somehow just because I got tails the last time, does that increase my chances of getting tails on my current flip? No, right? It doesn't. It's not going to have anything to do with it. So this is the key with independent events. The 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 probability of something occurring, okay, like the probability of, of, of event A occurring has nothing to do, it's not going to have any bearing on the probability of the second thing, okay? Now this can actually go on and on, but let's just kind of keep it uh, simple. In other words, you can have multiple events, but this is the main idea here, all right? So with independent events, okay, we're talking about the probability of something and something else occurring. Once again, I'm stressing the word and, so you can detect that in your uh, probability prompts. So when you're looking at your scenario, ask yourself, is that situation kind of like a coin toss uh, scenario where one thing's not gonna have anything to do with the, uh, another? Well, if that's the case, then you have independent um, events, okay? So this will be the role they're gonna be using. All right, let's get into dependent events. All right, and this is, again, the probability of A and B occurring. So same kind of scenario, but this one's a little bit different. Now, I don't think it's more difficult, but it is different. So the rule is it's gonna be the probability of A occurring times the probability of uh, B given that A has occurred, all right? 
All right, let me go ahead and give you an example. All right. So, and you can see my little sketch here. Let's say I got a um, group of students in a classroom. And let's see here, there's four times three. So this is 12 students. So let's say this guy is Sam. Let's say this person over here is Bill. So, and let's say each one of these um, students has their uh, name, uh, like on a piece of paper in a jar, okay? And the teacher is going to be kind of selecting uh, names out of that jar randomly, okay? So let's try to figure out what's the probability that the teacher selects Sam and then uh, Bill out of that jar, okay? Sam and Bill, right? So once again, this is a probability of something and something else occurring, all right? So once again, we're looking for that word and, all right? So, so far, we've already ascertained it's either going to be an independent or dependent events. There are exceptions, but let's kind of keep uh, focused here on these two big concepts and probability. All right, so, so the probability of selecting Sam, okay, if there's 12 students, okay, um, is going to be what? Well, the probability of Sam being selected is going to be 1 out of 12, right? So let's say the teacher picks uh, Sam, and, and now you know, she has Sam on, took Sam's name out of the jar, and now she's going to go back in and pick another name, okay? So what's going to be the probability of Bill uh, uh, the second time around she goes to pick? Well, if you think about it, okay, it's going to be different than, than the probability of Sam. Okay, Sam had a 1 in 12 chance of being uh, selected. Now, the probability of Bill being selected is going to be what? 1 out of 11, all right? Because Sam's name is now already out of the jar, all right? So, dependent events, all right, is the kind of the opposite of where independent, where you have independent events. Recall, with independent events, one thing, the event of one thing, uh, had nothing to do with the event of something else. With dependent events, they do have influences on one another, okay? So we have to consider um, if uh, you have a situation where the probability, we have to consider the probability of the first thing occurring that, hey, it's going to impact the probability of the second thing occurring, all right? If you have that kind of situation, you're going to be dealing with dependent events, okay? Dependent events. So, Big picture, all right, is this. When you're looking at scenarios of the probability of A and B occurring, be thinking independent and dependent events. So you're going to be thinking one or two of these scenarios. What you have to do is figure out, is the scenario kind of like the coin toss, or is it kind of like this uh, example here where you have kind of like the students where one thing is going to affect another thing, okay? By the way, just on the last note, these rules, okay, can go on and on and on. For example, the probability, it doesn't have to just be the probability of A and B, it can be the probability of A and B and C occurring. It could just go on, on and on and on. So for independent events, for example, that would be the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C, okay? So it can just keep going on and on. So you should uh, hopefully kind of know that if you're studying this. But let me just remind you again, okay, look at these probability questions big picture. All right, I've seen too many times where students are doing the rules for conditional probability on things where they should be doing independent events or they're doing mutually exclusive kind of set up on dependent events. And that's the, it's, it's definitely confusing, okay, initially. So make sure, start big picture that you know the difference between mutually exclusive, independent, dependent events. You know, keep that always clear in your mind's eye before you kind of uh, uh, attack um, a problem. Okay, well, hopefully this video helped you out. Um, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. I'm always uh, trying to... Um, uh, great, uh, helpful uh, videos, math, science, etc. But uh, anyways, good luck to yourself and hope to uh, see you soon.